G'day guys, just a short video today. Um, we've got the opportunity to show you guys some S engines lined up here that we don't normally get to have all at once on engine stands. And that's an S50, S54, S65 and an S85. So what, what we're going to do here is just run through and show you them really quickly and um, basically explain why all these engines are on stands, which is to, well, they've all got engine failures of some kind. So they've come back as exchange engines that we've either sold to people or that have come out of cars or just need a rebuild. Um, we've had fairly woolly explanations as to what's wrong with each of them. So we have to assess them ourselves first and start to put a procedure together to find what's caused the failure, repair them and put them back to work. So Tony, with, with doing that, with tearing down an engine or trying to find what's wrong without the right information, what's a real general few tests we can do or how would you go about it? Well, obviously, just do a visual on the outside to start with as it comes in, make sure there's no holes in the block or anywhere that shouldn't be there, obviously, or the sump. Um, have a look at the oil, if there's any remnant oil in there. Maybe there's some contamination from coolant uh, in there, something like that. Maybe you might see some metal particles, that'll give you a hint. Um, check the engine, see if it might bar over manually, so it's free turning. If not, okay, well, that's pretty serious. And then basically it's just made of um, doing an initial survey after the strip. So as you're stripping down, observing what you're, what you're doing. You might want to do a leak down test if you think it might just okay. be a cylinder head issue. Um, you know, that'll, that'll give you an idea because you'll see during the leak down test, you'll see where the, if it's leaking, where it's coming from, if it's going past the rings, inlet or exhaust valves. Uh, it, it'll give you an idea to start with. Anyway. So it gives us a bit of a pinpoint as to where to pay a bit more attention yeah, to yeah, initially. Yeah. Um, but obviously once it's down, we'll measure everything, we'll check everything visually, um, and that'll be our initial survey. Okay. And then from there we, we go and then repair and, and rebuild. Okay. So yeah, come in um, guys and have a look at this. We'll go through what they are real quick. A lot of you will probably know what these are just by looking. First one we've got here is from an early 90s E36 M3. This is an S50 B30. This is the Euro engine. It's an individual throttle body, six cylinder, three litre. It's got variable cam control only on the inlet though. This is a single Vanos engine. This is our high pressure pump disc that the exhaust cam drives and then feeds pressure for hydraulics to control the variable movement on the inlet cam. It's a cast iron block, alloy head, uh, which was pretty well the start of the serious six-cylinder engines that BMW produced, other than the older S38s, so they were really good as well. Um, that's a, quite a tired engine, that one. That just needs a full teardown and, and going over. We know nothing about it. This is a, The next one we've got here is out of an E46 M3. This is the, the famous S54 B32. This is a 3.2 litre 6. Again, it has individual throttle body set up here with... Uh, dual cam control, variable cam timing control on exhaust and inlet. Uh, this engine's out of a, a race purpose car. It's a good friend of ours, his son uh, races this car and he's managed to, we think, upset the top end, bottom end at once. So he drives it hard and that's probably why he's so competitive. So that'll be an exciting one to pull apart. It's got a few problems to find. Uh, and then over to one of our favorite engines, which is the S65 four litre V8. This is a quad cam engine out of the E9X, E90, E92, E93, M3. This thing revs quite high up into the early 8000s and for a naturally aspirated small capacity engine it gives the six litre LS engines a good hurry up. Um, so quite an interesting one and definitely one of our favourites. And lastly up the end here we've got the S85 B50. This is a five litre V10. Again, individual throttle bodies on the top, five on each bank. Uh, good comparison to the Audi or Lamborghini 5.2 litre V10. This thing makes about 30% more than that engine um, naturally aspirated. And it's only a five litre. It's, this is a very impressive engine. And this thing revs to 8,400 standard. So and I think from memory, uh, this one engine awards, I think from two years running I can't remember I know it did win it, like engine of the year award uh, uh, when it came out the design and the you know the, the structure of this engine it was, yeah. it was a winner I think you're right there and this is a, this is a 2004 model engine so this this has been around for a while it only lasted I think uh, five years in their production cars five or six years but way ahead of its time for when it came out so what we're going to do as well with all these engines interestingly is 
we're going to weigh them all. So they're all long motors, they're all undressed. We're going to weigh them all. And the reason we're going to do that is because all the chassis that these engines came out of, we're going to, or we have done, is we've put LS engines into these chassis. So if you look over here to my right, this is an LS3. It's a cammed, rebuilt LS3, and it's going into a customer's E30. So it's very similar to the, the engine that Tony recently put a cam in for uh, the guys at Mighty Car Mods and went into their E30. So we're expecting a very similar result of about 330 kilowatts at the wheels. So we're going to weigh this and we're going to compare it to all these and we're going to see whether we're in the ballpark of them being similar, whether we're upsetting the weight or improving the weight of these chassis and just thought that'd be a good opportunity to gather this information real time rather than just looking at Wikipedia and you know forums on the internet and guesswork and all of the above. So they're all dry. Uh, there's a couple of items on different engines here which we'll compensate for. We'll put it all on a whiteboard and and get an idea and just to finish off Tony we're, we're going to pull all these four apart and start our new YouTube channel which is called engine autopsy <laughs> and that is pretty well as, as it sounds we're going to pull them down assess what went wrong how they died and um, try and perform some magic and put them back to life so uh, we look forward to bringing you guys this information and Tony's really excited about getting into these BMW engines he's a it's always interesting because like every time you You'll come across similar failures and problems over time, but it's a it's an ongoing process. There's always something, you know, now and again that, that comes up that you haven't seen before, and uh, that makes it interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, the big thing is, is people say, particularly with these two engines, the S65, S85, that BMW have stuffed up, and you know, it's a poor design engine, and they have rod bearing failure, and they, you know, they shouldn't have let this happen. And why does it happen on such an expensive car? But quite simply, this is almost a race engine. And these engines aren't really for the general public. They shouldn't be in the mums and dads' cars. And they require a really high level of maintenance, a very strict, specific maintenance. It's oil condition, oil quality, brand, uh, warming your car up, letting your engine oil get to temperature before you lean on it. Um, and rebuilding the engine often, changing rod bearings. It's a serviceable part. You know, an F1 engine or a, a V8 supercar engine gets rebuilt nearly every race or no, every couple of races. Oh, that, that, that's as characteristic of most engines. It's the load profile that determines the life of the engine. Obviously, if you're, if you're taking it easy and, and you're still feeding it good oil, you know, regular changes and things like that, you shouldn't have many problems. But you increase the load profile through the life of the engine, well, that dramatically shortens the life of the engine. You can understand the loading and the pressure and stresses on the components are increased greatly. And that's what you said. So a race engine is regularly pulled down because it's suffering maximum abuse all the time, you know. Um, and that depends how it's driven. And... They're, they're thoroughbreds and it's pretty hard not to put your foot down in something like this. <laughs> exactly. And they're a really narrow rod and that's for weight reduction and getting high RPM quickly and performance. So there's not a lot of surface area for these engines to lean on that an LS or an older engine has. So that, that degrades uh, life a little bit quicker on bearings and that's why they have to be changed routinely. Um, anyway, we'll get into that when we pull these things apart and thanks for watching and thanks Tony for running through that and it's going to be interesting, yeah. we'll see you at um at the other end of the field up here when we pull <laughs> this thing apart and yeah thanks all right so we've got the s50 on the scales now just to keep it consistent we're going to leave the engine stand hub on the back they all weigh the same and it's just a, a point of difference that we're going for they're all undressed to about the same so we can look at the variables there but this is the s50 on the scales at the moment we're reading 166 kilos so we'll record that down as our first weight and we'll sling up the others and see how they compare. S50 on the scales. This is the E46 M3 engine. Sorry, S54 that is. Um, if we have a look up here, 160 kilos. Surprisingly lighter than the S50 at this point. Dressed exactly the same. We've got the same engine stand hub on the back, so we'll record that one.
Cool. And off with that, and on with the S65. Okay, so S65 is on, and this one I believe is undressed about the same as the others. Yes, no rotating parts on there. And we're at 175 kilos. We'll call that 175. So surprisingly, so far only nine kilos heavier than an S50 and 14, 15 kilos heavier than an S54. It's quite interesting. S85, 188 kilos. That's a light engine. That's pretty light for a V10 for what you get. It's a 500 horsepower engine that weighs 188 kilos. Not bad. Now finally we're going to drag over the Misfit from this bunch and uh, the LS3 B62 I like to call it and uh, let's see how much she weighs. Maybe we should do some guesses for this one. Uh, I'm going to guess about, I'm going to guess 200. What do you reckon Cal? 190. Josh? Okay 185, that'd be nice, let's hope it is. see what it does. Oh, well, lighter than we all said, 177 kilos. That's pretty good. I know these are undressed, but as I said, we're doing like for like, so. 177 kilos. Virtually identical to the S65, so that's interesting. Um, it's only 17 kilos heavier than the six cylinder. Well, in fact, it's only 11 kilos heavier than the S50, which is quite surprising. Um, yeah, so there we go. A good round of results, I think. Um, so the myth of putting an LS3 into a BMW and having a nose heavy uh, upsetting the handling and all those sorts of things I think is that myth's been put to bed. In fact we have a shorter engine, it's wider so I think it, it's better than any of the sixes as far as handling and weight distribution is concerned. So this makes a really good candidate for BMW chassis. Um, but before we finish the episode we're going to um, down behind you guys here, if we swing over to the right, we've got a N54 fully dressed that's come out of the 1M that's behind us here on the hoist. Uh, we've just put the S65 into, so we're going to get our S65 back out of the engine room. We're going to lay all the rotating components and all the dressed items onto the top of it and weigh it again. And we're going to weigh it against the N54 just to see what the comparison is for what we've done with the 1M as far as weight's concerned. Bear in mind there's intercoolers and things that have come out of this as well which won't go back in so uh, let's see what we get with that. Okay so here's our fully dressed N54 which has got the turbos, loom, all the rotating parts on there as it came out of the car. So this is 191 kilos, 192, 193 kilos. 
which is a little bit lighter than I expected actually, so that's, that's not too bad. So we'll record that and then we'll throw the S65 back on and we'll throw all the dress components I've got on the ground there ready. So we've got headers, intake, power steering, alternator, starter motor, wiring harness, it'll all go on and we'll weigh it and see how they compare. Alright, so we're back at our S65, so we've got the 175 kilos, now we're going to load it up with all the missing components, and we'll try and balance it all on there and see if we can get a comparative dress weight. One bank away, so 188.3. Next set of headers, 190.8. So it's like one and a half kilos per bank on the headers. That's really impressive. And we'll throw the inlet manifold on for the grand final number. Hundred and ninety-five kilos. Wow, look at that. So about about two kilos heavier than an N54. I think that's, um, I think we call that the same. So there we go, a fully dressed S65 versus a fully dressed N54. I'm calling that the same. Awesome result, okay. So that means in the 1M, we're disappearing uh, intercooler, some piping, um, some extra oils and things that uh, well, probably not ex any extra oils. We've got an oil cooler on this as well. So we're further back. We're a shorter engine. I think we've improved the handling of a 1M by putting an S65 in. So that myth is also busted. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. And hopefully this data has um, helped given you a little bit of insight into your conversion that you're thinking of doing and a good range of engines here. So we'll just get that on screen and you guys can mull over that for a little while and hopefully that helps thanks for watching and tune in for some more engine work coming on our new channel engine autopsy cheers